This video is sponsored by SheBop. SheBop is a woman-owned sex toy boutique for everybody, specializing in body-safe products and education. Visit SheBopTheShop.com to shop online or take classes. Our next question comes to us from one of our listeners in England. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's bring up that voicemail. Hello, sexual gurus. I'm planning on doing a whole month of anal-only sex with my girlfriend. She loves anal and organs in denial, so um, I thought let's step it up a notch and do both, but with the added element of no vaginal penetration. Um, it would be much appreciated if I could get some expert opinions on the challenging mechanics of the situation. Is there an easy way she can stay relatively clear every day without the tedious process of a full enema? Maybe some sort of mini enema? Or does the ancient saying, shit happens, hold truer than ever in this context? Lastly, is there a lube that would be best for the situation? taking into account that we are in the UK, which means we have a very limited selection of good quality lubes, and she is allergic to almost everything, which is just our luck. And I, of course, welcome any other points that I may not have addressed in the question concerning diet and whatnot, any other preparation that may be necessary. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Well, a month-long anal marathon. Uh, oh, like there is a, a lot of territory to cover here and perspectives to be had. Uh, Samson, let's start with you. How would you respond to this question? Well, as a gay man, <laughs> um, woo, and a month-long anal marathon, that's, that's a lot. But I would definitely uh, recommend aloe vera you know, incorporating a lot of aloe vera into the diet as well as uh, psyllium husk. There is also a product uh, that a lot of gay men are using called Peer. And if you take that along with a lot of water, like you'll basically be ready to go. But, you know, it, it, it does uh, take some maintenance. And um, even with that maintenance, sometimes it requires a little bit more maintenance or you might get a surprise. So, you know, um, I would I would personally let my partner do what they need to do to prepare. Um, but those three things that I just listed definitely will make it a lot easier. Samson, can I just ask out of my own ignorance, the things that you just mentioned, the aloe vera, I, I know what that is. That's, and that's, that's for topical use. Is that right? No, you can drink it. Oh, you can drink aloe vera. Absolutely. It's so good for your insides. Okay. And then the, and then the other two, would you mind saying those again? And, and are those also for ingesting? For, uh, for psyllium husk. So basically psyllium husk is a product that uh, you can, you can take it in a capsule form or you can mix it in something as a matter of fact. Um, and this is not me promoting anybody, but, but they sent me some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead on this out them out. It's this stuff right here called colon broom. Okay. <laughs> you can order some colon broom and it has everything in it that you need. Um, yes! To, I love that. to be as clean as possible, okay? Um, and there's also Cascara Sagrada. I mean, it, it really is about what you're putting in your body that helps regulate and, and, and take care of all the maintenance. Absolutely. And water, lots of water. I hope, I hope that uh, those are available or similar products are available in the UK where this caller is from. Uh, uh, lube. Also, lube, you need good lube, so you need to get a good silicone-based lube. Do not get water-based lube because it's sticky and it sucks and it dries up. You can use spit instead. So get um, silicone-based lube, or you can use jojoba oil. Jojoba oil? Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that one. Jojoba oil is really great for lube. Interesting. Uh, Reva, I saw you had your hand raised next. Uh, we're going to approach some of the dietary. Yeah. I was just going to, yeah, I was going to just piggyback on the dietary. I do agree with Samson that it is a lot about what you put into your body. And just for clarification, I am a holistic health, I'm a plant-based holistic health coach. So um, I'm going to be a little biased, not biased. No, this is fact. Um, the more whole plant foods with fiber, and that's essentially what psyllium husk is. It's very condensed fiber, which is why you would take it with water and it helps clear you out. Um, those things help, but if your diet doesn't consist of those high fiber foods already, you need to slowly integrate that into your system. Or as Samson, Samson said, you might get some surprises that you don't want. Um, that can wreak havoc on your digestive system and then it can cause cramps and diarrhea and all kinds and of things. Yes. 
you stop doing it. And then you're going to be like, well, I'm back to square one. What do I do? So slowly, slowly integrating that if your diet isn't already very high in fibers. And um, this gentleman wasn't very clear about, um, he said his girlfriend is allergic to everything in regard to lube, but jojoba oil, that's usually pretty good, hypoallergenic. Um, and topically speaking, so is uh, coconut oil, although it can be an allergen if ingested. So it kind of just depends on what she's allergic to. But my main question is, this wasn't clear for me. Is it a month of anal sex every day? That sounds. Or is it just anal sex within the context of one month when, when we're going to have sex, it's going to be anal? That wasn't clear. And I suppose we have to leave that open to the imagination for the moment. Um, I don't think that we can prescribe any advice one way or the other there. I have like more questions than I do responses <laughs> because like, sh yeah. Yeah. It is an intriguing down. voicemail. <laughs> right? It was. A, it had a lot of components. I kind of want to have a conversation with this person. <laughs> Rain, what? Uh, I, I saw you raise your hand. I can. I. I actually. Um. There is a lot going on in the voicemail, and taking it from the top, one of the things that this person is trying to do is orgasm denial. Because not only does their partner like anal, but their partner also has an orgasm denial fetish, which is why they are trying to do a month of no vaginal penetration. I just want to let Jude Law know that it is a stone cold fact that you can be fucked up the ass and have an orgasm. I, some of my best and most strongest, uh, Samson, you know what's up, that's right. Some of my best and strongest orgasms are anally based. So if someone's like, oh, orgasm denial for a solid month, you only get it up the back door, no orgasms for you, I will be coming my brains out. So don't think that if you're just doing it in the back door, you're taking orgasms off the table. That's going to still happen. So approaching a month of anal only as orgasm denial um, might not necessarily pan out, particularly since the caller is saying that their girlfriend loves anal. She's you're probably not going to be able to factor in the orgasm denial part. The second question that they were asking is, what should I do in terms of cleaning? Everybody's colon works different. I love the fact that Samson brought up colon broom. I want to take a broom to my colon for sure. That is amazing. <laughs> in addition to your diet, everybody has a different metabolism. I know some people, when they're going to do an anal scene, they have to take Imodium, they have to start fasting the night before, they have to live on cigarettes, they have to like not have any food for 12 hours. If I want to stick something at my butt, it is five minutes of cleaning and I'm good to go. That's because I've taken the time to get to know my metabolism. The if, When you look at a colon, we tend to think, okay, there's your mouth, it goes all the way down, it exits out your rectum. And that's not true. The ass has a lobby and there is a second internal sphincter. And when we're doing cleaning, unless you are hooking up with John Holmes, you're only trying to clean out the lobby. You don't want to get past that second sphincter. You can actually overclean things. Now this person saying, what could I do in terms of metabolism or diet or what I can give them? Poop happens. When you go to an asshole, that's poop's home. You can't be surprised that poop's in its home. It's going to be there. You can do your best to clean it out, but you're the visitor, not poop. So if you can't deal with poop, you have no right to do anal play in the first place. The caller didn't say and specify whether they were planning on doing anal every day or just a month of anal. Asses are more delicate. That is just a fact. You, you cannot be pounding every single day on an ass. You can get hemorrhoids, you can get internal tears. Mucous membrane inside your, your rectum is a lot thinner. The vaginal vault is designed for banging. The ass, so pleasurable, it is more delicate. Don't think I'm gonna do a month of orgasm denial. I'm gonna be banging my girlfriend every day. I'm not gonna run into poop and her butt might not get sore because all of those things are a factor most important thing for her is to get an idea of what her metabolism is. If you're excited, if you get, if you're, oh my God, what I'm going to do, you know what happens when you're excited? Your metabolism speeds up. And I've had people, I've taken the time. It, your metabolism, everything speeds up when you're excited. So think about it. 
If you're really excited about something, all of a sudden you're breathing faster, you're sweating more, you have to pee more. And you're like, well, why, why is that? Everything speeds up. You clean your butt, your butt's good to go. And now sexy time's about to happen. Everything is speeding up. Your heart's going, your lungs are going, your pulse is going, your butt's not clean anymore. The more excited we are about things, the faster our whole metabolism and everything speeds up as a result. Poop's probably going to happen. You did mention that, uh, or, or the caller did mention that your girlfriend is allergic to almost everything. What does that mean? Because it's a case by case basis in terms of people's bodies. So before you do a month of orgasm denial, anal only project, find out the fucking move that works. They're in the UK. I already know for a fact that it's harder to get good effective sexual supplies in the UK. Brexit is an issue. Um, people all the time tell me in the UK, the weird things that are banned. First, get good lube that works for your girlfriend that she's not gonna be allergic to. Then figure out how her metabolism works. Take the time to get that figured out. And once you have those locked down, then explore your month of anal activity and be considerate of the fact that if she gets a hemorrhoid or a tear or gets inflamed halfway in, call off your month of anal only activities because there are a lot of added factors. It's an ambitious project and it's possible but you have to get all of the equation locked down before you implement it. I only have two things to add because everyone covered pretty much everything that's important. Um, you ended it with um, your girlfriend is allergic to everything. We don't know what that is. Do a skin test in your elbow or in your wrist. Do a skin test before you use it on your genitals <laughs> or your asshole. Um, and number two, you knew, you understood it when you sent that voicemail, shit happens. Understand that you may encounter poop. That's all you need to do. I mean, after everything everyone else said, take notes, understand that, and make sure you do a skin test on the arm for your girlfriend, and understand that poop happens. <laughs> shit happens. As you if you it. can't hang with poop, you don't get to do butt stuff. <laughs> exactly.